action news reporter King DeConnie here, exclusively reporting on the famous Jane Goodall while she does her research. For those of you who don't know her, Jane Goodall is a physical anthropologist and, in specific, a primatologist, someone who studies primates. We are here at the Gombo National Park in Africa. As you can see, there are numerous chimps in the wild. Special exclusive reporter, Kate Nakana, doing a special report on you, Jane Goodall. You can't do that. Yes, I can. This is a special report all about you. I have to be here. Oh, okay. Then follow me. Okay, let's go. Okay, so doing some research all about you, I learned that you have different ways of approaching chimps. Please elaborate on this. Well, most of the scientists who study chimps do not give them time and feelings. I, however, have given each chimp a specific name rather than a number. Also, chimps have been thought to be as violent, aggressive animals with crude social arrangements, and researchers do not think of them as people with feelings, personalities, something which I have revealed through my research, and I make them more of a part of me. That's very fascinating. Thank so you So your that. first theory, being that both humans and chimps are used to us to hunt and eat. I found a prime example to show this. So apparently, David Greybeard, a chimp that you, na um, that you had and named him, um, was digging in a um, termite mound, and he was had a thick grass blade as a tool, which is pretty pretty amazing in my opinion. But what was even more amazing was the fact that he started digging, and he had chosen a select sliver and peeled it to the shape of his liking, very very slimmer, similar to humans. This fascinated me. How did you come along with yes, this? Yes, you were absolutely right. And in fact, another really interesting thing I learned was, I was while I was observing Greybeard up in a tree with something pinkish in his hand. Two smaller female chimps were nearby and with their hands stretched out. To my astonishment, David Greybeard was eating the pink object. He dropped the object. He dropped and it fell to the ground. Then two two bush pigs came screeching out of the greenery, attacking Greybeard. <laughs> object was a baby bush pig. David Greybeard was eating meat. This astounded me. Chimps have been thought of as herbivores, which occasionally eat small bugs. They have never before been seen or recorded of as eating meat. Like humans, chimps are omnivores. Wow, many of us were mistaken and assumed that chimps were only herbivores. That is an amazing discovery, Miss Goodall. Now please, tell us about your second theory about how both humans and chimps fight for their territories and use aggression and anger to show their feelings. Come, come, I'll show you this example. Come on, follow me. Two monkeys, right? Yep, I see them. Well, in 1974, a war broke out between these two groups of chimpanzees. One group eventually killed many members of the other group. Also, I witnessed a series of acts of infanticide, the killing of an infant, on the part of one of the older female chimps. These appearances of the darker side of chimps' behavior forced to my to adjust my interpretation of these animals as being basically gentle and peace-loving. So basically, chimps do show aggression as humans would when they get angry, and they will show signs of cannibalism and eat other infants. Wow, that's very interesting. That was a very um, interesting sight of monkeys. But aside from the great discoveries we just mentioned about you, I heard you discovered other great things, such as, in 1970, the discovery of expressions of emotion where the chimps spontaneously danced at the sight of the waterfall, and you thought that an expression of awe in chimps resembles the emotion that led to early humans in religion. Or in 1974, the discovery of chimp war war warfare, where a war broke out between the Cascala maids and seven other males of a splinter group. This lasted four year years. The rival group was eradicated except for a few females. This type of violence had not been recorded in chimpanzees at all, and you discovered this. And in 1975, the discovery of cannibalism, where an ape by the name of Passion killed and, killed and ate an infant and shared the meat with her daughter, Palm. This cannibal did continue for a span of two years. Yep, that's me. So for the last part of our interview special, could you please explain to us how you arrived at your methods? Yes, of course. Well, first, I studied about evolution and about both chimps and humans, went to go study them and dedicated 25 years to do so, and started off by gaining their trust, observing them by far, and coming closer s slowly. 
And at first, they would not let me come close, but I came so regularly around that they became a custom of me and being there and following them around. And soon, they greeted me with hugs and kisses, as humans would. I also used bananas to lure them closer to observe. And after gaining their trust, I observed them and how they act within a group as individuals. And I gave them love, gave them names instead of numbers. I laughed with them, shared their emotions, and received emotions from them. I made some discoveries but knew they would not be heard unless I had scientific knowledge to back me up. Therefore, I went back to university to get a doctorate so that my theories had scientific weight to them. And when I went back, I spent more time with the chimps. I used the knowledge and fame that I had to convince researchers to improve conditions under which animals were kept in because I believe chimps deserve a home and deserve to be treated as humans too. I love chimps. So also, many of our viewers actually asked, why are you such an important person in our lives and in the world? Well, I am the first person to be studying chimps. And because of me, people now pay more attention to the environment of chimps. And because of me, now people know that there's a link between human and chimps because of the theories and discoveries I have made between them being very similar to each other. And because of me, now, since I opened the Jane Goodall Institute, we all pay more attention to all these animals in the wild and help out the African animals in their natural habitats. Okay. Wow, that's amazing, Ms. Goodall. It's astonishing to me that you've also written numerous books about your adventures. You teach little kids about issues in Africa with the wild, and you've also opened the Jane Goodall Institute, which, where you help chimps in the wild. You're one important anthropologist in our world. Oh, I don't believe so, but thank you. No, thank you, Ms. Goodall. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. King Deconda. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Miss Jane Goodall. We love Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall is the best. Jane Goodall is the best. The best anthropologist is Jane Goodall. I love Jane Goodall. I know you want pop, you want Damn. you want rock and roll. You want it? Hey, hey. This year's remix got some phonics. Oh, I got pop, I got Damn. 